All right, guys. Uh, don't forget, we have quiz next Wednesday, and topic will be your current homework, homework five. Do you have any questions on this? It's due today. Not at the oh. moment. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess I should mention a few things. Um, so the one new thing here, uh, we've talked about this before, but you haven't learned how to use them, hydrostatic curves. Um, so by, by this time, we're used to computing things using integration, right? Computing where the LCF is, where the LCB is, what the volume is, et cetera. But somebody's already done this all for a given hull. Um, and they've made a chart out of all this. So this is what uh, uh, a chart would look like. Okay? Uh, this, it's very, very cramped, but um, it's not very difficult to read. So the main thing you do is figure out what is the draft um, that I'm operating at currently. If you're, let's say, if you're operating for this particular ship design, if you're operating with a six meter draft, we stick to this horizontal line. Okay? And wherever this intersects, all of these other lines is where we get the values from. For instance, if we want uh, the displacement uh, for a draft of six meter, what do we usually do? We usually figure out, okay, six meters corresponds to what volume submerged. And if I know the volume submerged, I can convert it to what's the weight or the displacement of the ship. But doing that for a rectangular hull is very easy, but for a, a regular hull, uh, hull shape, it's not that straightforward. So to prevent uh, the need to do integration over and over, we come here and say, all right, let's go through six meters and go until we hit this curve that shows gross displacement in fresh water and in salt water. Okay, let's assume we're operating in the ocean. So where do we hit the six meter curve, uh, six meter line and the curve over here? So what is the displacement value? Now there are multiple axes, the X axes, because there's many different things listed here. So the displacement is actually on top here scale of displacement in tons so six meters for this hull in salt water would be roughly 12,200 tons roughly okay um, so uh, we didn't need to do any sort of integration same thing with other quantities let's see this is trans can you see the uh, markings on the diagram? Are you able to read the text? They're, they're a lot yeah. more clear on your screen than when I printed it out, but yes, yes, I can read them. Okay, perfect. So um, let me zoom in a bit. Uh, you know, we've, we've also learned how to compute the GM over and over again. So, um, we take KM minus KG gives us GM. So uh, KM, how do we compute? We compute it as K, KB plus BM. Okay, fine. We know how to do all that. But again, somebody's already done all of that for all these different draft values. So if you're um, at six meter draft, let's come here and let's see, we hit KM curve over here. All right. So what does the KM curve say? It says one unit is equal to two meters. What does that mean? We go down to the X axis and we see, all right, that location is how many units? It's roughly 5.2, 5.1 5 .2, 5 units. Okay. So what does that mean? This 5.2 units means at six meter draft, my KM value is uh, 5.2 times two meters, which is 10.4 meters. So that, that's how you should interpret these. Is, does that make sense?
Yes, no. Mm, no opinion. It, yeah, those those ones check out. All right. So let's say if I asked you, what's the uh, MCTC value at six meter draft? What would you do? So one unit's 20 ton, it says, I believe. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you are, you're looking at this curve, correct? And the MCTC curve. And uh, uh, like you said, one unit is 20 ton meter. Okay, fine, next. So you're going, you're going to go down to the bottom of the, the graph, I guess. All right. So eight and a half times 20. Is that about yeah, right? Exactly. So that's 8.5 times 20 will be the value in ton meter. That's the MCTC value. Moment required to change trim by one centimeter. So you do the same thing for any other quantity that's listed here. And just be careful with what axes to use. So most of the axes will use the normal x-axis, but the, um, some quantities like the LCB and the LCF curves, you have to use this other guy. Um, it's just marked with respect to the amidships, you go forward or aft. Okay, um, yeah, and on top we have the displacement uh, values. So um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, uh, figuring out how to read the, the curve and then instead of the value given being given MCTC equal this much, you can just go and uh, so this MCTC is only valid for one draft value. What if your draft changes, then somebody has to give you this value again, or you have the, the figure and you can just go and look it up. All right. Um, anybody else have any other questions on the homework? So just going back to that graph, um, I don't know if I'm just missing it. Is it the bottom right corner that tells you the overall length of the, the hull? Looks like there's a symbol on the bottom right off the graph that looks like the midship symbol. Uh, no, um, it doesn't tell you the overall length of the hull. So see all okay. of these quantities are the quantities that change with the draft. Oh, okay, uh, all right. Length of the hull is a constant. So um, um, this LCB and LCF location. So let's see if we are looking at um, uh, the LCB curve or the LCF curve, okay? So if we look at six meter draft, LCF would be this value which is not 11 units. It's basically one meter aft of a midships. That's what this means. If you go to a five meter draft, then your LCF goes to right about exactly equal to a midships. Make sense? Oh, okay, so it's distance from midship. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, exactly. So that's what it says, aft of amidships and forward of amidships. Okay, any other questions? Okay, so again, a uh, reminder, we'll have quiz next Wednesday and it'll cover material from this homework five. All right, so let's go and start talking about drag and resistance. Um, so last class we, we just started mentioning uh, wave resistance and frictional resistance. And today we'll go into more detail and uh, we'll, we'll do an example probably next class to see how if you have a full size ship and you make a small model, how do you relate the two? How do you say, all right, my design has this much drag, which means the real ship will have 
uh, this predicted value of track. Okay, so uh, first thing to remember is um, the drag coefficient Ed for a marine vessel. When we talk about marine vessel, we have to be careful of two numbers, the Reynolds number and the fruit number. When we talk about things moving in air, fruit number is irrelevant. It's just the Reynolds number we care about. So one is the Reynolds number. Right, and um, how do these two come into play? So total drag, um, F, let's say the drag force is basically comprised of two main components. It's a frictional drag Again, when, when I say drag, you might see other people say resistance, same thing. And the other component is wave making drag. And we know that um, the drag coefficient CD is defined as F drag divide by half rho v squared s okay and um this is the uh, reference area or sometimes you use uh, l squared length squared for this. So obviously L squared is not an area, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you why we can um, use L squared in place of reference area. Okay, so this, we, told, uh, we said drag coefficient has two components frictional and wave making so cd should also have two components one due to friction and one due to wave making and let's call these f1 So this we very briefly covered previous class. Using dimensional analysis, you can show that drag coefficient depends on these two quantities. So this is basically, um, well, first let me mention that the first variable here is related to viscous resistance. Vis viscous resistance, frictional resistance, same thing. And drag and resistance, same thing. And this second term is related to All right. And what do these two numbers depend on f1 depends on it's a function of this quantity this quantity if you look at it closely is just one over the reynolds number right reynolds number is what ul over nu so this is one over re 
Okay, and what is um, GL over U squared? It's um, the one over the fruit number squared. All right, so when talking about um, drag for ships, we think of these two things separately. We consider viscous resistance as independent from wave making and wave making as independent from viscous. So we'll talk about them one at a time, all right? So let's first consider F2, which is related to wave making. So energy we're losing because we're generating these wave systems, which are basically useless. Okay. So um, now remember, the reason we're talking about these coefficients is we want to have two clones, uh, two ships that look identical, one that's full scale and one that's a tiny model that we can test easily in the lab. So um, if we have two geometrically similar Let's call, uh, give them uh, names, okay? So the full size prototype, we'll use the symbol P for this and uh, other small scale model. We'll use M. <clears throat> okay. Um So if you think about the CD due to only due to wave drag, we would write it as the force due to wave drag in the full scale prototype P divided by half rho P U P. So I'll, let me also put a subscript P on the CD. This is just saying I'm talking about the full scale prototype. Similarly for the small scale model, Length of the model squared, velocity that we test the model at squared, rho m is, you, you can test the model in seawater or in freshwater. So that comes from there. All right. And, and uh, the same things over here for the full size prototype. Okay. 
And let's take the ratio of these two. So, uh, well, before we do that, you know, I've, I've written these as F1 and F2. So let me just write here. This is uh, F2. Of, um, DLP over UP words. And this thing is F2. Hmm. Uh, now, what does this F2 represent? Um, so if you remember, um, uh, recall that CD for a sphere, we, we know what the curve looks like, no matter where you are what fluid you use, where you are in the universe. Um, for a sphere, the CD will look something like this. Okay, any size sphere, right? A tiny little, uh, let's say a metal bearing versus a big wrecking ball. They will both have the same CD curve. That's what these F2 things mean. F2 is uh, well, this is the F1 curve, right? CD versus RE. Look here. F1, CD versus RE. And it's an inverse relationship, which we see on the graph. Um, you'd have something very similar for an F2 curve, the CD versus fruit number, right? The thing inside is a fruit number. So you'd still have an inverse squared relationship. So what this is saying is, if uh, let, uh, what the CD versus RE curve is saying is if the shape is the same for a tiny sphere or a large sphere, they follow the same curve. Same thing applies for ships. If the shape is the same for a huge ship versus a small scale model, they will follow the same F2 curve. Okay. Um, does that make sense? That's that's basically similarity or similitude. Is, is there any confusion here? Uh, let me know. I'm I need to make sure you you get this. Okay, it's really 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 important that you do. If anything doesn't make sense, ask me. Okay. Yeah, can't wait for pandemic to be over. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, you have two very different ships. Of course, the force on the two different sized ships will be very different. You'll have uh, thousands of Newtons drag for the full scale thing. And you might have uh, order of one or 10 Newton drag for the uh, little guy. Okay, but once we non-dimensionalize, they should end up being the same. So if we take the, um, the, the ratios here, what do we get? We get um, uh, let me see, wait one second. Mm. Okay, so um, F wave drag of P versus half rho P U P squared L P.
All right. <clears throat> so, fine. I mean, we haven't done anything. We've just divided the two different equations. Now, um, if you know, you, you'll take your small 3D printed model to the towing tank down here at CTEC and figure out okay, I have 10 Newton of drag acting on it. What do you actually want? So which which of these quantities is that 10 Newton? We're just talking about the wave drag, not the full drag. FWDP over FWDM? Uh, would it be the full uh, ratio? Um, so FW, so FP over FM gives you the ratio of what do you expect for the full size over what do you expect for the small size? So you want the partial size of the FWDP, right? Uh, uh, yeah, so, um, prototype is the full scale. M is okay, the- Okay, so M. Yeah, so it'll be just this one number. When you go to the uh, tank below and put your model in there and run it, you'll get the drag force acting on the model, right? So FWDM. And you know what liquid you've used in there. It's seawater most likely. What's the speed you ran the tunnel at? That's the U squared. What's the length of the thing? L squared, okay? And now all, all of the things in here are known. What is unknown is how much drag will I get on my full scale ship, on my prototype? So that's the unknown that we are after. Okay, and all of these things we can de decide, right? I want to run my ship at um, 20 meters per second. Yeah, that's fast. Um, and my length of the ship is known. I want to run it in the ocean. So all of these other things are also known. So the one we're after is what's the wave drag for the pr prototype? So uh, we can make a ratio like that um, F wave drag prototype over wave drag of the model, we'll just take everything on the other side is um, that goes up and up. Okay, so that goes up and that stays down, yeah. So that's the 10 Newton that you said, you just figured out all of these is known. We can compute this. What's unknown is F2, right? Um, the, we, we don't know what the curve looks like. So for a sphere, we knew what the curve looks like because many people did these experiments and made these curves. But for our hull design, unless we do these many experiments, we, we don't know what, they, what the curve looks like. Um, if you do, it makes life, uh, well, you can do, you can um, expand the things you can explore. But if you don't, what, what you should realize is, look at this, what, what if you run your model and the prototype at the same fruit number, what happens? What happens if you run the model and the prototype at the same fruit number? When I say that, does it make sense to you? What does running at the same fruit number mean? Okay, it doesn't make sense. So, um, do you know if I say two things operate at the same Reynolds number, what does that mean?
type of flow. Say that once more. The type of flow. Type of flow. What do you mean by type? Laminar turbulence, stuff like that. Okay, so you're talking about laminar or turbulent, but I tell you the Reynolds number is 10,000. What does that mean? It's got a lot of turbulence. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's turbulent. So you're you're talking qualitatively, right? Uh, what does the flow look like? It looks very chaotic and turbulent. Quantitatively, this is what it means: the combination of the velocity of the flow or the boat times the length divided by the viscosity of the uh, liquid gives me ten thousand. Okay, that's what it means. Now look at this. If I take a uh, a full size boat and produce a one tenth model, L becomes what? L becomes one tenth. But I can run the same thing at the, uh, run the tiny model at the same Reynolds number. How do I do that? Increase the speed. Yeah, we increase the speed to 10 times, which is not very easy, right? So it, it's difficult. Um, or you use a different liquid, so you change the viscosity. So that's, you should think of uh, all, always in those terms when you think about the Reynolds number or the fruit number. It is not related to a specific ship, it just, uh, it's just related to the flow conditions. Okay, speed times size divided by viscosity gives us the Reynolds number. Similarly, speed divided by these two G is constant, obviously, length of the hull, you know, we know. That gives us the fruit number. So that's what it means. Uh, now, can you tell me what does it mean when I run? Is it possible? Well, uh, what does it mean when I run a ship that's uh, huge versus a small scale model at the same fruit number? Which one runs at a higher speed? Full-size ship is 100 meters long, and small-scale model is one meter. What can you tell me? How do I make sure they both operate at the same fruit number in my experiments? Speed would be higher for a longer ship. Uh, speed would be higher for a longer ship. So the 100 meter long ship should be run at faster compared to my... No, I don't know. Keep, keep going. Uh, so this is 100 meters, small thing is one meter. I want them to operate at the same fruit number. G, you cannot change. L, I've just told you. One, one of them is 100, one is one. So to get the same fruit number, what do you need to do to you, to the little guy? Decrease the speed of the prototype by one one hundredth. So just uh, uh, yeah. So uh, you basically have to figure out what's the my prototype runs at let's say twenty knots. What's the speed I should run this little guy at to end up with the same fruit number? Length is already determined. G is constant. So the only thing I have to figure out is you. What's the flow speed I should test this tiny guy at? Okay. So. Um, conceptually, always think of these things in those terms, the Reynolds number or fruit number. They're always trying to get two different sized objects who look the same, meaning they're geometrically similar. We're trying to get them to operate in the same flow conditions. Um, so we can compare um, uh, how one's behavior translates to the other guy's behavior. All right. Now, you might see the problem already. It is close to impossible to get this big guy and the small guy to operate at the same Reynolds number and the same fruit number simultaneously. Okay, you see uh, U, L, both in the numerator here, U is a numerator, L is denominator. 
So this says if one increases, the other um, uh, has to decrease. Here it says if one increases, the other also has to increase. So it's a, a conflicting metric. So um, getting these tests is, um, it's, yeah, it's close to impossible to make them work for the same Reynolds number and the same proof number. So what does that mean? We cannot do any small scale tests. We, we need to build full size shapes all the time. Um, obviously not, right? So people uh, came up, well, fruit came up with a good enough way to overcome this issue. And I'll uh, tell you in detail about what steps you can use to uh, make sure your calculations work out. And then we'll do examples. Uh, but before that, does is this okay now? Um, what F2, F, and FR represent? Like in your mind, you can see all of this, right? Hopefully. So now um, help me answer the question. If you run the model and the prototype at the same fruit number, what happens to this term? Okay, so let's come to this other curve. If we have this tiny sphere and a wrecking ball and we operate them at the same Reynolds number, what can you tell me? Same Reynolds number, let's say uh, 5,000. What can you tell me about the two different objects? They'd have the same coefficient. It would have the same exact CD value, right? CD value is not drag force. If we want drag force, we, we convert it. We, multi, we have to multiply it by all of this stuff. So um, see here, the size comes into play, the speed comes into play, and density of fluid comes into play. So, um, but since they are geometrically identical for a given Reynolds number, they have the same CD. Another name for the um, the frictional drag was what? Uh, well, and this has other, see, F1. So that's basically an F1 curve, correct? So this is an F1 curve. It's a function of one over RE. You would have a similar curve for F2, where we, ha we would have um, a CD wave making versus a fruit number. Right, and it would be some curve, we, we don't know. So this would be F2 of one over FR squared. Is this making sense? How these two are related? When we want the total drag, we just add the two, right? Frictional drag plus wave making drag. So now, two different size prototypes operating at the same fruit number. What do you say? So they cancel out, go to one? Exactly. So they, although they are very different in size, they will follow the same curve because they are geometrically similar. So if I'm at a given fruit number for both of them, they will both have the same F2 value. So these two will cancel out. So that makes uh, life um, easier for us because we don't know what this curve looks like. <clears throat> so the exact uh, form of the function F2 that is the curve shape. is unknown. But if E and M operate 
the same fruit number that is the combination G uh, or U M squared over G. Okay, not squared. U M over squared of G L M is equal to U P over square root of G L P. Then the value of F two. the same or both M and P. M is the model, P is the prototype. <clears throat> and this allows us We'll take this equation we had, cancel F2, F2, and what we end up is, it is this. Um, we can simplify this a bit more. Um, you, you see, we have, well, length of the two things is fixed, velocity of the two things. They are not completely independent. If we say we operate them at the same fruit number, you see the velocity of the two things are become related. So you cannot just run at any speed you want. If you pick a, a speed for desired speed for the prototype, you know you have to run your model at this speed that satisfies this equation. 
the, all that necessary to make sure you are at the same fruit number. Okay, so what can we do? We know this ratio, we will plug that into here. Any questions up until now? Okay, now, um, so now can you tell me, um, so I have a huge ship that is a hundred times longer than my small scale prototype I'm testing. I take this small guy, put it in a tunnel, and do a drag experiment, figure out it experiences uh, 10 Newton of force. The U chip is 100 times longer than the small one. How much force will act on the huge chip? So 10 Newton for the small guy, this is 100 times longer. What do you say? So be your scales cubed? Correct, so the scale cubed, so this is 100 yeah. over one cubed. Time to bottle drag? Right, so 100 cubed times this 10 value I gave you, right? What is that, 10 to the four, uh, 10,000 uh, uh, Newton, okay? So um, if you, uh, uh, of course, assuming that both of these are operating at the same fruit number. So that's how you determine the wave drag acting on the big ship. And you see that's, that's a huge, uh, that's a, um, increases as the cubed of the length ratio, okay? Uh, now, this length ratio cubed, if you think about two things that are the same exact shape, you can relate their volumes, okay? If you know the, um, the length of one versus the other, the volume changes as L cubed since they are geometrically identical. So this L cubed over L cubed is telling us we can use the volume ratio. If we know the displacement of the two things, we can use displacement of P over displacement of M. Okay, what other thing we know? We know displacement volume is related to the weight displacement, okay? So this is how, if you know the weight of the two things, that's another way you can determine this ratio very quickly. I'll, I'll write it and then it'll become uh, more obvious. So since P e and M are geometrically similar, We know um, nabla P over nabla M, this will scale as LP cubed over LM cubed. Okay. And also, uh, we know that delta is rho g nabla, which implies um, uh, this guy, uh, nabla p over nabla m is equal to delta p over delta m. Okay, so these two give us another way of um, finding the ratio of the forces 
So in the end, we have several different ways on one versus the other. We can write as length cubed ratios or the displaced volume ratios or the displacement ratios. Ugh. Any questions? All of this is clear. It's very important to understand the concept. We don't get lost in formulas. Make sense? Yes? No? Any step that a bit confusing? All right, um, so uh, that's talking about wave drag, right? We, we still have to talk about the other frictional drag and, and we'll do that in a second. So first let's, uh, in, in words, let's write down what this means. So um, All right, so this is talking about wave drag and the other guy, 
the other term F1 Hmm. Okay, so the first guy is called Fruits Law, and this guy is called Rayleigh's Law. And as we were talking about this, you know, Froude's law says Froude number should be the same. Rayleigh's law wants Reynolds number to be the same. And it's close to impossible to get both conditions satisfied for the model and the prototype. Not geometric, sorry, complete dynamic similarity.
Okay. So given that we cannot get this Rude number and Reynolds number to match simultaneously. Um, what do we do instead to make sure we at least get as accurate a result as possible? So th this is what uh, Fruit came up with. Um, this basically three, three, four steps you should you can follow. And uh, everything we're talking about here is not just theoretical. Um, this is how people design real ships. Um, they do small scale tests in towing tanks and uh, keep iterating on the design, keep refining it before they build the full thing. And they basically follow what Fruit proposed. All right, so the first step is um, exactly what we were talking about on the previous pages. We run the tooth, we run the small scale model at the same fruit number that we expect to run the full uh, large full scale ship at. So run, All right, now I have a question for you. So does it make sense to you when I talk about running things, measuring things, can you in, envision what the experiment looks like, how you actually do this practically, not just theoretically? What would you do if I told you to go measure um, total resistance for a small, one of your small models that you created. Like we'd be talking about real life experimentation like in a runner tank, right? In a what tank? In like a wave, not a wave tank, but like getting it up to speed in a small controlled tank, right? Exactly, yeah, in um, uh, it's, um, so the smaller tanks of this kind are called a flume, F-L-U-M-E. And they might have wave generators, might not. The one we have downstairs here, um, usually um, I take you there, but right now I can't. So we have a um, towing tank that has a wave generator. So, you know, you, you can technically measure all of this with waves um, to simulate what would happen in the ocean. So you basically mount your model onto, uh, let's say a sensor 
and either you make your boat move forward or you make the flow go past the boat okay and uh, for ships it's usually preferred to tow the boat not to just make the flow go past the boat um, i think i showed you this a uh, while back but let's take a look again right over here. why oh Fifty years of experience within hydrodynamic consultancy, best consultancy range of client facility. The art commercial can be certain for all ship needs, okay. so you can be. So look, they are creating a small scale uh, model of the full. Uh, obviously, you can imagine this uh, would uh, how huge this would be when they create the actual prototype. And you see they have all these um, harnesses, trusses, and this is the, they, they mount their model onto this um, truss and basically tow it along in their tunnel, okay? And the attachment point is uh, connected to sensors, force sensors. So they can measure based on uh, what speed you're towing at, what is the um, what is the drag force you're experiencing. That's basically the force in the horizontal direction, right? So look at that. That's usually where the sensors are placed, and you see the hull um, pitching. Uh, and, and you can measure all of that torque, et cetera, okay? So that's how you would do it. Uh, you would put, you'd create a model like this and put it in a tank and measure what's the forces acting on it. And obviously when you change the speed, the forces will change. Remember, we don't, do not care about the speed. We always care about the fruit number. We care about the Reynolds number. Those are the two things that matter. And then you've seen how these two things are a combination of several different variables. Okay. Um, let's see. Any questions? Um, so here they have a wave maker and see same setup. They they are towing their uh, model through these waves, and they can measure the time varying forces acting on the models. Um, you, you do the same thing here at SeaTech. Of course, our, our towing tank is smaller, but it, conceptually it's the same thing. They, uh, the Navy has a huge tank. Where is it? Is it in Virginia? Uh, somewhere up north, but exactly the same concept. They uh, don't like this guy. All right. So that, that's what I mean when I say you run an experiment and measure the resistance. Okay. So same fruit number and measure the total resistance. So what force would you be measuring? What, would your sensor be measuring the wave drag or the frictional drag? When you do this towing tank experiment, which drag are you measuring? Wave drag or frictional drag? Try it, take a guess, and then we'll talk about right or wrong. Would be wave drag because you previously mentioned that matching speeds wasn't 
an option for Reynolds number? That's you've actually hit on a very important point. So you said during the wave tank testing, um, I, I told you we will match the fruit number. So it means we should be measuring the wave drag. But in the actual test, you know, you cannot separate it out, right? You, you, you measure the wave drag, but at the same time, there's friction acting on the hull. So you measure a combination of these two. We would like to measure only the wave drag, but that's not feasible, okay? So um, that's, that's the problem with um, doing these towing, ta uh, towing tank tests. And that's what Fruit um, tried to address. So that, that's the first step. You run the towing tank and you measure the combination. We want wave drag only, but we cannot get it from the four sensors. We get the combination. The um, next step is um, you get an estimate for the frictional drag. So, Now uh, you'll ask me, how do I compute the frictional drag? I mean, I just told you it's not possible to uh, separate the two. So to do this frictional computation, you usually have to do an estimate, okay? So it's usually a flat plate estimate. For flat blades, we have um, we have empirical relations that give us the resistance okay, or drag. And if you imagine the hull, it's basically two flat plates joined together. Again, not correct, but a good enough estimate. So we somehow compute, try to compute the frictional resistance, and then. Um, So you subtract it from the total drag. The remainder Okay, the remainder is the wave making drag. What do we do with this wave making drag that we have recovered? What should we do with this? I haven't told you how to do step two. I will tell you this later on. But right now, we do the towing tank, get the full total drag, somehow compute the frictional drag, subtract it. What is left is the wave drag. What do we do with this? Why do we care? Why, why are we here? Why, why did we want to get wave drag in the first place? This is wave drag for which one? Is it for the prototype or the model? It's the model, so you could scale it up to get the prototype value. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're running our model in the towing tank. We figure out wave drag for the model. 
once we know this, we can scale it up to the full prototype using the ratios that we did on the previous page. So, which can be So that's exactly the step we talked about um, with the formulas. And then the last step is, okay, this step three only gives me the wave drag acting on the prototype. I also need to add back in an estimate for the frictional drag. Okay, so to this number, Add an estimate for the frictional drag. Okay, and how do we do this? This can be estimated. Based on So that's the, that's a procedure you would follow. Uh, for instance, when the, um, when the human powered sub team was designing their uh, full scale sub, they, they would run small, small models and they would have followed this procedure to estimate what's the, what would be the resistance for their actual, um, actual sub. Any questions? And again, I'll do examples to where each of the steps will become very clear. Any questions? Okay, don't forget your homework's due tonight and quiz next week will cover this homework. Okay, I'll see you all Friday.